I am joined by today uh, has been and will always be a heartthrob. Um, the moment I saw him in Jane Tu Ya Jane Na, his debut film, he has always, always left a very wonderful place in all of our hearts. Even if he does intense roles in films like Kidnap and Luck, that rom-com image, that boy next door image of charm, wit, charisma will always seep through the silver screen. And it gives me great pleasure after a long time, Imran Khan is doing his UK interview. So I'm super glad to have you on Film Me Show Me, Imran. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for inviting me. <laughs> right. So I think we're going to begin with 16 years of Jane Tu Ya Jane Na. Um, yes, I can't <laughs> believe it's been 16. <laughs> exactly. It's it. So I ironically, I watched it as a teenager and now that film is a teenager. So it's quite great how <laughs> that all sort of worked out. Um, now, I remember when uh, watching a lot of the interviews back then, your uncle, Amir Khan, who obviously it was his production, and uh, he said that it was like a youthful Dil Chahta hai. But I think after watching the film, if there's anything that I've gathered, it's definitely not just about friendship or love. It's a lot more about coming of age. It's about um, self-discovery. I think the Imran Khan sitting here today, who's gone through a gamut of experiences and uh, circumstances, which we will address as well in this interview. How do you look back at Jay back then? You know, uh, at the time that we had started the, the film, that I had signed on, I and Abbas, we, we we already had a sense that there was a great deal of overlap between the character of Jay and myself. Uh, there are all these shades. There's 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 a running uh, running bit in the film uh, about Jay not having a cell phone, and uh, his mom or the at various points people prompt him and say get a cell phone. Uh, I was actually the last person in my social group to get a cell phone at a point when most of my friends and everyone around me had gotten cell phones. I was resistant to it up to my early twenties. I was the guy saying, no, thanks. I don't need one. I'm okay without a cell phone. So when I read this bit in, uh, in the script about Jay, I kind of looked at that and I was like, ha I get that. That's, uh, and as it happens here, I am now 16 years later. Uh, and I am still very much the guy who's, uh, who's averse to his cell phone. I don't use WhatsApp, uh, because I, I don't want to be that connected. Uh, I, my cell phone is on silent. Most of the time I, I, I keep it at, in, in another place, you know, whenever I'm at home, it's, it's off on a table somewhere and I don't look at it for a couple of hours, a couple of hours later, I go back and I look at it and I can say, okay, what do I have to respond to engage with right at this moment? Uh, so all, all of these little uh, little threads, which overlap then, continue to overlap today. And there are parts that I, uh, you know, I watched Ranidu recently. And uh, looking at it through slightly more mature, slightly more grown up eyes today, I have an appreciation for the film that it, it goes beyond what I thought of it then, you know. There's, there's gentleness to the film all the way through. Uh, the way all of the characters interact with one another. Uh, all uh, uh, it, It's not just about the romance. It is about the friendship. As friends, the way uh, uh, the, the, the way Charlene is, 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 a, is a supportive friend to Aditi. Mm. The way that, uh, uh, that, that uh, Rothlu and, and, and Jiggy and Jay have, have this bonding. All of the friendships and relationships in the film just feel warm and caring. Uh, and I, I, I didn't quite realize how much I would appreciate this uh, until I now watch it as an adult and I go, that's so sweet. They're so, they're, these are such good friends. They're so nice for one another. Mm. Absolutely. And I think at that stage, because, I mean, this was your first film. So, you know, Uswak Thora Sa Matlab expectations life se kafi alag honge, right mm -hmm. i'm sure you must have at that point in time had an ambition an idea of how things would pan out or how you would want things to pan out so when it comes to ambition because even janitor janitor two 
a certain extent also has that sense of ambition as well, right? Because these are college going kids, you know, who also want the best out of life. But, you know, to tell you the truth, while we were making the film, we saw it as a really small film. Uh, we were all, uh, we were all youngsters, newcomers. Abbas, who was making the film, was 30 while, we, while making the film. Wow. Uh, I was 23. I celebrated my 24th birthday uh, on set while, uh, while we were shooting Papu Khan dance. Wow. So the 80s were 20, 21. We, we, were, a, 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 we, we were a group of kids making a film. And bear in mind that at that point, mainstream Bollywood looked very different. Right. Uh, it was very, very, uh, uh, very classical in its storytelling. Uh, heroes had to be heroes, you know. Uh, so here was this story of kids growing up, navigating their way from, you know, adolescence into adulthood. Uh, we didn't see it as a big film. We saw it as, as a small film. Uh, right up to uh, right up to the the uh, the release weekend, uh, our film was going up against a film called Love Story Twenty Fifty. Oh yeah, which uh, which was a very very high profile high visibility uh, film. Uh, that was a launch vehicle for Harman, uh, and the way that we saw it, that was a big film, and I was actually nervous about that clash. Uh, I had a word with uh, with AK. Saying, listen, I don't, I don't know if we should uh, be releasing our film because ours is just ours is a small, simple little film. Those guys are a big budget uh, Bollywood blockbuster. Uh, so our view and our vision of the film was always far more modest. Uh, and it massively outperformed any of our expectations. It wildly exceeded what we, what we could have foreseen for it. Mm. Mm. No, absolutely. Uh, yeah. So we found ourselves suddenly with a film that was bigger than we thought. I found myself thrust into a kind of visibility and stardom that I had not anticipated, uh, nor really uh, was I targeting. Uh, because to my mind, that kind of stardom is for, you know, uh, a different kind of hero. Mm. So it... it, it all of it was bigger than we thought it would be. Sure. I'm sorry to bring this topic up, but I don't mean to sound cliche when I say it, but I think it just goes to show that it's not always black and white. It's not just what the statements made in the public domain always is. I mean, the dreaded N-word of Bollywood, of Hindi cinema, nepotism, for example, right? I mean, you're an example where, you know, you it wasn't a decor like I said to you, it wasn't a decorated film. Jane to your Janina was a very simple it was a it was a very humble film, um, and I think that itself really just kind of, in a way, debunks that narrative a little bit about you know, um, you know, if you're related to someone really famous or if you have a relative in the industry, you suddenly get like a Thali se sajaya who are debut because you clearly rep you clearly don't represent that, do you? Uh, I wouldn't see it as such. Uh, you certainly get opportunities. You you get uh you get your foot in the door. Uh, you get invited into rooms that you otherwise may not be invited into. Uh, that, 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 that certainly cannot be discounted. Hmm. Uh, but that also doesn't mean that an audience will like your film or that they will remember it a decade later. Right. So it, 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 it is a bit of both things. You, 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 you get called into rooms and you get opportunities that someone else might not. But having gotten an opportunity... What do people think about the film? That that you can never manage. You can't control that part. Right. Um. But I think when so when you began, obviously you were very young, and uh, it obviously hit the audiences then. But when you see uh youth of today uh sort of referencing, especially on Twitter or X now it's called um <laughs> I still call it Twitter. I can't I can't help Everybody's it. Everybody calls it Twitter. Nobody says X. Who's Who says X? Like the only X that I have is blocked on my phone. If you know, you know. Right. <laughs> right. No, but what I'm trying to say is that it's it's so nice to sort of see like, 
you know, youth of today really referencing your films. I mean, there's so much love for you on the social media space, Imran. Um, it's overwhelming. It's crazy. Yeah, exactly. Please talk me through your emotions about it because it must feel like a very strange deja vu type of a moment, I think, when you see stuff like that. You know, uh, that kind of love and appreciation and attention on social media <clears throat> Is it, it? It's kind of an it's 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 this intangible organic thing. Hmm. People just say, you know, I like this moment from this song, so I'm going to screen grab it and make a clip and add a caption to it because you know it touched my heart. It it resonated, and then that propagates and they share and it propagates and it shares and th there are there there are these organic moments that you know to me at some point might have been a, a throwaway moment in a film that I hadn't really considered. It's just, it's a little snippet from the middle of, of a whole film. Mm. Someone, they're like, no, that, that resonated, that landed. And I'm going to share and propagate and share and propagate. It's humbling, genuinely. Uh, because as, I mean, as, as you know, I've spent basically a decade kind of under the radar, creating no new content, putting nothing out, uh, not, not, not engaging with that public persona. Mm. After all this time, for someone to remember something that I had done, to hold on to it, to give it that kind of value and say, hey, I still like this thing. It's, it's tremendously humbling. Bless you. No, I mean, we will be talking a bit about the hiatus. Um, very shortly, but I would love to know a bit more actually about your uh, perhaps the influence of commercial cinema that's had on you because obviously you're you hail from a very rich dynasty in that sense, you know, when it comes to cinema. Even as someone who was born way after the film's release, like I've grown up watching Yadoki Bharat, I've seen, you know, even Tisri Manzil, so many amazing films, obviously, of course, Kayamat Se Kayamat, which I believe he produced as well. Um, right. We've grown up watching these movies, and these were films which were trendsetters. And of course, they really formed the the landscape of what we now, like you said, associate with commercial mainstream Hindi cinema. Yes. Um, what impact did that have on you growing up? And do you think that somewhat that had set a bit of an expectations for you when you made your debut as well? Uh, well, you know, uh, I grew up in a house steeped in in movies. My granddad, two of my uncles, Amir and Mansoor, uh, were, were, were working in the movie business. Uh, my stepdad was an actor, is an actor. Hmm. Uh, my mom, for a while, uh, helped out uh, with the writing and with the dialogues on, on Khayamat Se Khayamat Tak. She, uh, she did the costumes. So I grew up in a home, as I say, steeped in cinema. But cinema as craft, not as a commercial endeavor, not as a, a, a means to, uh, to celebrity or to stardom, uh, but about the craft of the thing, which, is, uh, which meant that uh, the way I was taught was that you put your heart and your soul and everything that you possibly can, honestly and truthfully, into the craft. You make that the finest that you possibly can. Uh, and you and you speak from the heart. You try to be truthful. You try to be authentic. And once that is done, you put it out into the world. And what comes of it will come of it. Uh, but you are not doing this basis uh, how much money you will earn. You're not, do this, uh, you're not doing this uh, in an attempt to grow your stardom. It, it is about the work. Uh, and, and no one in my family was, uh, was, ever, was, uh, was enamored with the glitz. So we didn't, you know, no one in the family went to the filmy parties. We didn't, uh, it's not like I grew up, you know, rubbing shoulders with uh, other film people. Uh, I... I, I went to school, I made friends as I did, uh, but my friends were my own. They were people from, from my school, from my, uh, from, you know, my neighborhood, uh, so on. 
so i was exposed to the workman like side of it with the the blue collar part of it if you will which is you do the thing the rest of it i didn't really have a sense of or a visibility of mm. uh so the, the the that that is kind of that that is the the overall impact of it that that's the, that's what i invite you i fell in love with it but i fell in love with the craft mm. very very beautifully articulated once again and i think just to summarize what you said is that uh growing up in that atmosphere you did not necessarily view it as commercial cinema you just saw cinema as cinema right yeah. basically is what i'm trying to say yeah that that's exactly it that uh, you 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 do this as a creative uh, endeavor mm. because you have a story inside you that you simply must tell to people mm. that's that's the reason right if you're doing it for another reason i was taught that that is dishonest and i don't know and i i, I don't know if that lands in quite the same way with a with with a viewer i think i think i think at that as as a viewer as a person who watches a film as a person who listens to a, a song as a person who reads a novel we can sense and we respond to truthfulness it just it it uh it rings differently mm. again amazing absolutely amazing and what i really like i mentioned in my uh, introduction as well is that now thinking about the characters that you've done you always mm-hmm. had this very uh how do i say it a character that you'd probably meet in your daily life you know these are very ordinary in the in that sense very ordinary characters but you added a sense of like wit sarcasm um and a bit of charm that came into the mix as well now of course you know as an actor you're always at the mercy of the script and the director and the storyteller of course and the mm-hmm. other surrounding cinema techniques but this obviously has come from you within right i mean even if i watch like a mere brother ki dulhan i hate love stories you always have that 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 spark um what would you say that spark or the virtues or the qualities that you brought to these roles came from so the, the as, as you say you are as an actor you're part of a larger picture uh there is a, a writer who has written the story in the screenplay who may or may not be the same as the director uh all of these people are kind of coming together to make the whole what is in your hands as as an actor is what are the projects that you are choosing to attach yourself to uh as it happens i would tend to be drawn to stories by first time filmmakers from jane to to i hate love stories to break ke baad to ek mere ek tu to mere brother ki dulhan uh these films are all films made by people who are making their first film uh so there is a kind of a simplicity and an honesty i think to to those stories by and large uh so i i found myself drawn to those i consciously would always try to veer away from uh quote on quote heroism hmm i i really really wanted for every one of these characters to feel like someone that you might know uh the idea being that when you're watching the film ideally you should see yourself in this character or you should see your brother or your your best friend or your son or just some something like this you should watch the film and feel like either i know this guy or i could be this guy uh and and th- th- that kind of relatability was was very very important to me always in the stories that i would choose to attach myself to and in the way that i would try to try to inhabit the character uh to, 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 that that was that was uh, that was a conscious effort uh, on my part to kind of make them feel relatable hmm. the other part is once you're making it feel relatable then you then then you sprinkle in a little bit of fun uh yeah. something to, that, that and and that's going to vary film to film you know with with i hate love stories the guys a bit of a rogue uh so you're kind of le- le- leaning into uh that that aspect of his personality uh mere brother ki dulhan the guy has a has this kind of stand up sincerity mm. so 
one tries to weave in those those uh, those smaller shades, but always always trying to base it in relatability. Hmm. And I think also, uh, I want to pick up about the fact that you've worked with first time directors because I think that's a really good point that you made there. And it's interesting because these are first time directors, but backed by pretty you know established studios. I mean, Mary Brother Kidona was a wire film. Um, yeah. I hate Last Rose is a Dharma film. You've done even Ek Me or Ek Tu for that same matter as well. Um, why do you think it is though that you felt very comfortable with the first time directors rather than? Uh, not working with the uh, with the like the established actors. I mean, I know you work with Sanjay Gadvi, um, yeah. in Kidnap. Um, yes. Uh, well, and was that necessarily uh on a decision that you chose, in fact, not to work with established directors, or was it just because those were the sort of roles you were approached with? Uh, no. It it was that I tended to gravitate more towards these kind of stories because. when i would uh, have conversations with filmmakers who were a bit older from another generation uh very often i felt a uh, a creative misalignment right. that they, they they were looking at it through a lens that i didn't quite see uh and i was like i i i didn't i didn't feel like our visions would always quite line up uh i i i think that it is helpful <laughs> excuse mm. me i think that it is helpful uh in the creative relationship if the if the if the director and the actor have some kind of a, an an overlap of life experience where you can relate and you can engage because uh and and th- 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 this this does also come down to how much creative latitude the director has and the actor Mm-hmm. uh so if if both of you are particularly uh, evolved developed open people then you can work uh, through a, a wider range and if if not then perhaps your life experiences fit this way and mine fit this way and then we're not we're not quite creatively in sync mm. yeah. so having sampled a little bit here a little bit there and kind of had a number of creative meetings more more often I would find myself uh throwing my hat in with the guy who was kind of my age and was telling a story that resonated with kind of my journey as well where where I was at that point in life hmm i mean i think that's a very very well uh, very thoughtful i think of you as an artist to really make those decisions and i think also your characters are not just the qualities as I, as we just spoke about but i think also uh you know as audiences indian audiences were very sentimental we have a very hum kafi bhavuk hote hain you know jab hum filme dekhte hain aur aam zindagi ke taur par hum they were very emo- they were a very emotional bunch and i think what i loved about those characters is not only are they relatable and uh familiar but they're also quite contemporary in their approach so there was like this really nice fusion of the whole indian sentiment but then also western uh feel which i think kind of in a way summarizes you as an individual if i may say so um yeah sorry like you yeah i mean exactly so i was going to say do you think that because of because i you know you you've grown up i mean obviously you, I, you were you born in india or you were born in the us uh, no i was i was born in the states born uh, in- i moved back to india but i also kind of partially grew up in the states i studied out there as well so uh, my my parents uh, divorced when i was very young I moved back to India with my mom. My dad continues to live in the states, mm. so I spent my life kind of bouncing between uh, the continents. Right now, I'm sure that must have had a huge impact on you, like growing up and you understanding both the cultures as well. So, do you think, to some extent, that because they always say art always stems from a place of reality, right? So, do you think that also translated through the characters and the roles you chose to? I would say. you know there there are so many so many so many people like us who are uh children of two countries children of two worlds exactly uh because the the, the indian diaspora has spread so far beyond the borders of india you know uh throughout the world we have now second and third generation uh indians 
who are of Indian origin, whose family lineage traces back to India, traces back before partition, like, uh, but who have kind of grown up in another country. And so many of us, I think, feel that. We feel like we kind of exist with one foot here and one foot there. Uh, and that experience of, uh, of being a bit from here, a bit from there, and having that, ha having that overlap, trying to find your place in the world and saying, okay, well, where do I fit in? Because I'm not exactly that and I'm not exactly that. I'm, 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 I'm somewhere here. I'm trying to, trying to find where I fit and where I belong. That experience, that 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 place of being, I think, uh, somewhere that 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 would inform all of the films that, uh, all, or all of the creative choices that I would engage with, because I would watch American films. You know, I, I grew up watching the Hollywood blockbusters, so I I love the the grammar and the spectacle of that. But then I would watch Hindi films, which are so much more emotional. You know, and I, 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 I'm the kind of audience that I'm a super, super involved audience. You know, when I watch a film, I weep, I scream, and I cheer, and I jump, and I, I'm, I'm very, very involved. Mm. Uh, and yeah, Hollywood films they don't do the crying stuff that well. You know, they, they, they come close to emotionality and you know a little moist eyes, and then they move away from it. True. Uh, yeah. Uh, they, they they see cinema, they they squeeze the tears out of you. Like, come on, you're gonna cry now. Yeah, full crying scene. <laughs> Which, as 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 a movie goer, I want the whole experience. <laughs> you know, if I'm an, an emotional scene, make me cry in an emotional scene. That's what I came here for. Mm. It's a you know, uh, so that part of it, I I have generally found lacking. In uh, in in uh, in Hollywood and English cinema, mm -hmm. uh, they they shy away from that part of it, and that's what I really appreciate about about they see cinema. So, trying to find the sweet spot with those, you know, mm -hmm. uh, uh, the, the the emotionality and uh, the celebration of of joy of love, all of it, which uh, which is integral to to they see cinema, with some of the 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 edge and the trappings and the uh the the, the wit of of the Hollywood cinema that I grew up loving. Mm. So it's kind of for the sweet spot always. I'm so glad you mentioned this because I've always said this, like especially as a British born of Indian heritage. Um you know, it's almost like, you know, we're almost in a no man's land, you know. I mean, even if you think about psychologically and um see mm. culturally I'm still very much rooted to my to my faith, to my country, but at the same time, you know, you also having to adapt and customize yourself to the to the to the country you live in, you know. Yeah. And I think it's a very interesting dichotomy. I think that we all have faced, and I'm so glad that you mentioned that. Um, so let's talk a bit more about your filmography, and I think we're going to lead up to the whole hiatus that happened. So it seemed like you really secured a place for yourself in the whole comedy rom-com sort of genre that definitely became your brand essentially I um, enjoy it's you but it's you i mean even just speaking with you imran and like gauging like your responses and the way you speak i think it's fully you i, I honestly and i'm saying that from a very very positive place because i think it's wonderful not bohat kam log aise hai you know modern contemporary hindi cinema mein jo ek genre ko leke bohat strongly represent kar sakte hai you know, see, diversity is great in cinema, but then sometimes you always want that one representative who you associate a certain style with, right? Mm -hmm. So then you, of course, try to diversify yourself a little bit by doing films like Luck, like Kidnap, like Matru Ki Bijri Ka Vandola. Um, unfortunately, as uh, even though these were kind of a bit more on the darker side, on the thriller side, unfortunately, they didn't work. And then obviously, in 2015, which ironically, next year is going to be 10 years of Kati Bhatti, um, you tried to come back with the rom-com genre, but it didn't quite work. Yeah. Do you feel like you kind of, did you feel like you lost your way in between? Or did you feel like, or, or, did, or was there something else that kind of, you think you kind of were trying to navigate and it just didn't quite work out per se? Well, it's bits of both. Uh, Kati Bhatti was 
and an an honest uh, truthful endeavor i i i like the film you know actually uh, me too same <laughs> uh and it's a bit of a romantic dramedy it it was a little more grown up it 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 had a a kind of a a, a thread of tragedy running through it which I, which i really uh, i i really liked that uh so one thing that i've that that i've uh, kind of arrived at from this vantage point now is that w- with a bit of distance you separate the merits of a film from their from its initial commercial uh, commercial performance because a film does what it does at box office and uh that may be good that may be bad but with the passage of time do people remember the film do they uh do they come back to it do they uh, uh do they remember it after all this after some uh, some passage of time that is is for me i think a, a major uh, thing to consider how do you feel about the film with time mm. uh and, and are you going to judge it uh and i i myself was guilty of this are you going to look at it only through the lens of did it earn enough money it didn't you write it off creatively how do you feel about it Mm. so that that is one uh, change or uh, shift of perspective that i have had uh as a creative person i did frequently try to uh, stretch and jump across genres because creatively it is interesting to try something different particularly uh, consider if you are you make a film which has a particular tone for example let's say i did uh, i did i hate love stories and break ke baad back to back mm yeah uh now having made those uh, or no well that, that's not the best example or because oh because i i went from that into ek mai aur ek tu mm i kind of done these uh, three consecutive urban romantic ish films so then right in the aftermath of that when i found myself uh, when uh, vishal approached me for butru it felt like an interesting creative thing to do mm. kind of say i've spent this much time doing that i want to do a different thing uh and again i try to always uh, approach it from a creatively driven place uh rather than uh, shall we say a calculation of what is good for your career mm. Mm. because that is an intangible that's that's always going to be an unknowable you know what will be good you're never going to know uh you never know if something will uh, if something will do well or not if something will be liked or not never in your hands so you do have to approach it from a place of creative integrity do i feel like this is a worthwhile uh, endeavor mm. that that that's the place from which i would uh, i had approached it uh and sometimes it worked sometimes it didn't correct correct now i know you've done quite a few oh. of these recently but you've spoken a lot about your hiatus um now i don't want you to rehash all of that because i know it's a bit jarring and a bit tiring um but obviously the imran that we're speaking with right now is someone who's obviously uh like i said as well before who has had and gone through that gamut of emotions and process things and has come out as a someone who's kind of on the verge of healing or whatever you want to call it um but at that point when you were going for your break i don't think things must have been that clear in your mind at that point right like it must have been a very whirlwind of emotions surely yeah and to tell you the truth it was far less to do with the externalities of work and the film industry mm. uh, and far more to do with my own internal journey you know uh i love movies i love making movies i love being on set it is genuinely the greatest pleasure the greatest privilege the greatest joy to wake up in the morning and go to set and get to make a movie i love it there's nothing like it 
I found myself uh, in those years feeling increasingly low uh, and increasingly weak and fragile and unable to do the thing which I loved so much. Mm. Uh, so it was rather than me consciously uh, taking a step back and saying, no, I will not do this. It was me starting to drop things that I simply was unable to do. Uh, it, 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 it wasn't a difficult choice for me. The difficulty was to do the other thing. It was so difficult to, to show up and work that I said, that I started to feel like I can't, I can't do this. I can't wake up in the morning. I can't go there. I, I can't do this. And so I just started saying no, 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 no. To who, whoever called, whatever the thing was, I would just say, no, I'm sorry, I can't. 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 And if you say enough no's, after a while, the phone stops ringing. Mm. And that's kind of how I found myself there. I, I simply could not do the thing. And so rather than it, me making a difficult choice, I took the easy choice, which was to step back and say, I'm just going to disappear, sit down and not be. Hmm. That, that was the easy way out. Hmm. Well, thank you so much for sharing that. Uh, I think a lot of people will be able to relate with what you're saying because uh, you know, as someone it's who goes through, funny, anxiety, yeah, I mean, honestly, as someone who goes through anxiety and depression, I understand that you know it's it's so hard to deal with, you know, because you like you said, it's not the externals, it's the internals, which is so so tough to to address and to really uh put yourself at the forefront and make that decision. Uh, but kudos to you for at least doing that and actually accepting that because I think that's definitely a massive stage of progression. But having stepped back, and I know you said it was an easier decision. But what did that decision teach you? Uh, maybe about yourself internally as well. It taught me the real value of the thing. Genuinely, I have a greater love, a greater appreciation, a greater value for the craft, for the work, and for the fans than I ever, ever, ever did before. Uh, I haven't worked in 10 years. Still, people will remember a film of mine. And they'll, you know, and a film that uh, Katti Bhatti or Break Ke Baad, these were films that were commercial failures. Mm. People remember them today and they talk to me about it and say, hey, I like this film. It, it touched my heart. The value, the, the, the value of that, of someone remembering a thing that you thought was a loss and then saying, but I like it. I love it. How I value it so much more now. I appreciate the, the time that I spent on it. I appreciate the thing itself. So my, uh, my appreciation, my value for the films that I have made, for the chance that I've had to make those films, all of it, it changes. Back then, because I was looking at it through the box office lens, Hmm. I would dismiss a film and say, I made this film, but it's a flop. I, it's a I'm, I'm ashamed of it. It's a bad film. Hmm. That's, that, that, that is a sin to, 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 to look at the thing that you have done and to, to, to reject it and to be ashamed of it. I feel, I feel terrible and I feel guilty about that. Uh, so that, 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 that was, uh, that was not the correct way for me to, to look at these beautiful, beautiful things that I had made that I had gotten the chance to do. I, I, I got to work with people who I love, who I respect. We got, I got to do a thing which I love to do. And so few people get the chance to do. How many, so few people get the, the opportunity to work on a film. People dream of it and never get the chance. Here I'm getting the chance to do the thing. I got to make a film. I got to put it out there. You be grateful for that opportunity. You say, thank you that I got the chance to do that. Mm -hmm. So this, this is the thing that I've learned. I've, I've learned a greater, uh, a greater appreciation for, uh, for the craft and a greater appreciation for the films themselves. Hmm. 
No, but I don't think it's completely your fault though. Because honestly speaking, like I remember um watching a uh, a particular chat show um that was obviously known for its controversies and its controversial takes on things. It was basically a time pass tour of a show as people have always often said. <laughs> but there was a point at times where you were often pitted against Ranbir Kapoor for some reason or the other. I don't know why, because you both are completely different actors. And Ranbir is an exceptional talent. And I just think that you both have your individual strengths as actors. But it was almost like ye ya wo, you know, all the time in, in, in certain questions. Yeah. Um, see, I know even that it was very frivolous at that point in time in terms of the questioning. But do you kind of feel like maybe when you are pitted, not just, I'm not just saying in reference to Ranbir here, I'm just saying just generally, you know, when you are in the spotlight and highlighted so much, and when you are kind of, again, pitted against so many other things and mentioned in lists and whatever, do you think that also, in a way, had a really big role to play in your mental health and the way it kind of affected you as well? Not, not for me personally. Uh, it did have an impact on the way that I viewed the work and you start to buy into that narrative. The, uh, the, 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 the pitting of actors against one another or the measuring of a creative endeavor in this kind of horse race kind of thing is a, it, 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 it is kind of a corruption of the thing. Uh, mm -hmm. And because it's so normalized, the media engages in it. You start to, look at look into it and in my 20s uh you 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 i would see that thing and it would poke you somewhere and say well how much money is that guy earning how much money is that guy earning how come i, I should get to, i should be earning more money than this guy mm. you know uh these are all of the things which it, it's easy to kind of get caught up in uh and 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 for a while it 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 does start to uh, it does start to cloud your cloud your judgment cloud your perspective and i never liked the taste of that i uh, i tried i tried it for a bit and i i i uh, yeah it, it it never felt honest like this this is not the real thing hmm. and I, I And, you know, I think it's really good that we're speaking about this because, you know, I feel like mental health as a discussion point has, it kind of was on the, on the, on the, on the sidelines of the industry for a while, you know, um, in the sense, because obviously we've had cases before of, uh, you know, of veteran actors who have unfortunately, you know, succumbed to and have had reports of it being, you know, of them having really bad mental health state and it obviously then resulting into very tragic circumstances. I think the fact that Deepika has really been open about speaking about mental health, the fact that she's got her own foundation now in raising awareness. Uh, we've not, I mean, even with the men as well, with the male actors, obviously, I'm sure you obviously know the case that really shook the industry and shook the world, I think, when that happened and the conversations that arose from there. And now you sort of speaking about it. Um, But obviously, at that point in time, this was kind of things you might have heard and known about. But what helped you to really give you strength again? you know, and get your mojo back in life. Because, you know, it's so hard, it's so easy to lose that innocence and that zest for life in that. Mm -hmm. Well, what really uh, anchored and centered me was becoming a father. Uh, because my heart instantly went out to her. Mm. Uh, why does this thing make so much noise? <laughs> Uh, the thing that really anchored and centered me was becoming a father. Uh, you kind of reach a place in life. Damn it. I'm going to take this thing again because my... Yeah, oh, I couldn't even hear it, to be honest. <laughs> oh, you can't, It's really loud here. Oh, really? I can't even hear it. Yeah. Okay. It, at, at my end, it's going bing, bing, bing. Okay. All these notifications. Okay. Huh. Huh. So your father, being a father, you were saying. Being a father, yeah. Because you kind of reach this place where you start to feel responsibility and you feel like I'm responsible for the life of this person. 
uh, and I have to be there, not just to not just to be there, but to be the best version of myself that I possibly can because I simply must. If I love this child, I have to give my best to her. Uh, and that then became the my my fuel, the thing that would the thing to drive me. Hmm. Because when you're when, when when you're at the when you're when you're dealing with the uh, the, the the lows, and you feel low, you feel weak, you feel like you 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 simply can't take another step. You think, uh, I, I would think of my daughter, I would think of my child and say, no, I have to, I have to, I have to get better. I simply have to get better. Mm. Whatever it takes, I feel low, I feel, uh, I feel weak, but for her, I have to make myself stronger. I need to, I need to push forward. I have to take one more step, just one more step. You just take, take one more step. And that's that, that 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 was the that was the driving thing for me. That was the driving force. The landscape um in which you left the industry uh to now has changed completely. Um I think the and, and I say this as well, I, I miss the old Hindi cinema, even if it, when I say old, I mean even the pre pre pandemic ones, you know, where the 2000s, the mid 2000s, where you were there, you know, I, I kind of miss that era a lot. Like, um, when you sort of look at the content being made now and you see the way dynamics have changed, how do you feel about the way things have become? And I'm going to spotlight a particular genre in my later question, but I would love to know your response right now about the way things are currently. It, it's strange times for the business, you know, because on the one hand, uh, the streaming business opening up in India has really opened the doors to a whole new, uh, whole, a whole new group of people, uh, all new talent. And I'm, I mean, from actors, writers, directors, cinematographers, just absolutely everyone across the board. Far more people are, uh, are, are getting the chance to do the thing. So we get to hear different voices. We get to see different kinds of content. The genre, absolutely everything has opened up in that way. Uh, somehow that has also translated into uh, the, the the downside is mm. that something is also translated into uh, some kind of a stagnation in uh, in in film form. Uh, and I'm differentiating here between series format, which is kind of long format, and mm -hmm. which is a finite two, two and a half, three hours, you know, whatever. It's a, uh, it's, it's, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, a it's a finite format. Uh, the, the series long format, ideally, they go three, four, five seasons, as long as you want. As long The longer they can stretch it, the happier they'll be. But within uh, within films, somehow it has reduced and pushed us all into kind of spectacle filmmaking. Uh, so in Hollywood, that means superhero movies. While the series format uh, has allowed for an opening up of kinds of stories, somehow within the film format, it has narrowed the scope for the kinds of stories that are told. So basically, everyone is making some version of a superhero film. You know, in, in, in Hollywood, they've got almost exclusively uh, costume wearing superheroes. And if they're not literally wearing costumes, it's mm. practically a superhero film. It's a franchise film. Mm. Uh, and that seems to have also uh, kind of translated across to Indian cinema, where even over here, the tendency by and large is to make these massive, larger than life spectacle films that are bordering on the Hollywood superhero style. And they, they, we've kind of lost that uh, small to mid-budget character-driven film. Agreed. Uh, uh, the, the, the kind of film which, you know, I Hate Love Stories or something like this, which was made for 
nine, ten crores, eleven crores of rupees, mm. which is not a micro budget. It's not a mega budget. It's a small to mid. It's a mid budget. Middle ground cinema, yeah, yeah. That space just went away. Uh, people make micro budget films or mega budget films, and I swear to God, you know, in in the last couple of years. I'll hear uh, about a new film coming out, and you hear about the budget, and like it, 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 it makes my hairs in the back of my neck stand. Or they spend how much money on that movie? <laughs> the, the the numbers are just insane. I I I don't know who where the money is coming from. I don't know where who who's putting that much money in and. You know, you feel like that that one guy in the room. Uh, there's a, there's that classic story of uh, the emperor has new has no clothes. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. I feel like the guy kind of going. Has anybody thought of spending less money, <laughs> make a cheaper film, and you have to earn less money? And you know, if nobody thought of this. Why am I? <laughs> Oh, yeah, no, but it's 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 true as well, and I think uh, you're so right. And I think what's happened is is because of the big success that Hollywood has had. I think somehow, uh, you know, in a, to an extent, and I'm not I'm saying generally for Indian cinema, we've kind of had this whole thing where we're trying to chase that Western validation when we never used to need it anyway. You know, like even if you look at the 2000s films, even if they were catered for like an NRI audience, they were still rooted in its approach. You know, they were modern, but they were rooted. You know, it's like what you, like I mentioned about you, the films that you did. I think you're yeah. right. They've sort of lost that middle ground. Um, but I think largely now, um, last year especially, uh, there was, you know, sort of like rumors or kind of like words being said about, you know, the rom com genre coming back. You know, because we had like Tujuti Me Makar, we had like um Rocky Orani Ki Prem Kahani. This year we've had uh uh Bato Me Saljajir that's done really well at the box office. Is it coming back now, and this time with a sort of more socially relevant topics as well, or do you think that there's still a lot of work to be done in terms of bringing back the rom com genre? And please feel free to elaborate on any other genres you feel strongly about as well in your response. I've always been skeptical about uh, people's analysis of genres that work versus. You know, because somehow it always feels like this analysis comes just on the heels of an event. Never before. It's just when you know when a film does well, then they're like, ah, it's because the rom com is dead. That's what that that's why that that film failed. And a few years later, a romantic comedy does well. Like it's because the rom com is coming back. Well, sure, you can say that basis a successful film. Uh. So I I think that the tendency, uh, unfortunately, is filmmakers tend to chase something that is successful. Mm. Mm. Uh, so when a film does well, everyone looks at that and goes, "Do something like that." Yeah, and a dozen people rush to do something like that without understanding. Okay. Did that film work because it's a romantic comedy, or did it work just work on its merits? And really, I think any film that uh, that has merits at it, that has some kind of value, will land. It will resonate. Uh, so, you know, uh, right now they're talking about superhero fatigue, mm. uh, and it's because. They, they they make a few superhero films. They make them really, really, really well. You know, you talk about the first Iron Man, you talk about uh, no, no, uh, Nolan's run on Batman, stuff like this, and everyone's like, oh my God, the superhero film, this is what we're, what we're all going to do. Everyone shows up. Everyone starts making superhero films. Some will be great. Some will be okay. Some will be terrible. You point to the terrible ones and say, it's superhero fatigue. It's not superhero fatigue. It's like that film just was not that great. Mm. So at any moment, people will rush to make a thing without fully appreciating what it was about that that really worked. Mm. 
so I, I don't think, by and large, I, I don't believe that genres will die. Uh, at a moment, the market might be oversaturated with, uh, with, with offerings and some may be better, some may, may not be as good. And so then the, the, market, the, the makers themselves get scared. The producers, the actors, the directors, they kind of go through phases and go, oh, nobody wants to make these kinds of films, so you don't make them at all. Right. I mean, you know what, you're so right. And I think, again, like, could it also be the fact that, number one, the pandemic has maybe obviously thrown people off guard? I mean, the, the storytellers, the guys who pump into the business, you know, the producers, the distributors, do you think it's thrown them off guard? And secondly, do you also think that it is the the rigidity and almost the obsolete nature of the corporate systems refusing to move with the times, which is making it a bit more redundant as well? So do you think it's a combination of both these things? A, a major, major problem, as I see it, is it's not a new problem. It's mm. a very old problem. It, it is the tussle between art and commerce. Yeah. Exactly, correct. Uh, as we have moved into uh, the digital age, the streaming age, uh, more and more, these guys are viewing content as a product. Uh, they're, they're approaching it by a kind of the software model. Mm. Uh, the uh, the dot-com boom of the early 2000s, uh, which in a lot of ways, continues to be the uh, the software model, which is first you consolidate a user base, then you figure out how to monetize it. Uh, that model, I guess it, it works for Facebook. I don't know whether that works for a creative endeavor. Uh, so as long as we're kind of chasing uh, uh, subscriber numbers, uh, and you're trying, you're trying to put out enough content to generate subscribers. Uh, I don't know whether that is a model that is supportive of the creative endeavor. Hmm. So while it has opened up the market tremendously, uh, more people than ever before are, uh, are are getting a shot at the thing and are getting to do the thing. Somehow there is there is still a. Uh, there, 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 there is still a fall off. There, there, there is something that we're losing with this. Mm. Uh, so, uh, you, 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 it, it's not that these old guys are out of touch. It is that their, uh, it, it's that their tic tac is different. Mm. Uh, these are corporate guys uh, who have corporate jobs and whose job is to green light this much product for this quarter. Correct. Right. That's absolutely so, so true. Um, so uh, it's not organic. Yeah, it's not organic. That's so true. But I think Imran, now, um, obviously, there's been so many talks uh, about you, you know, coming back into the industry, working again, uh, you know, doing what you love the most, which is acting. Um, if you were to make your comeback, so to speak, be it as a storyteller behind the camera or as an actor in front, what sort of a story or what sort of a a, a, a talab, shall we say, do you have as an artist right now? Uh, so my first thought is that uh, I, 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 I want to, uh, uh, I have some, I feel like I have some unfinished business with acting. Uh, so the first thing that I do, I, I, I am looking for work for acting work. Uh, and much like I did in my twenties, where I was gravitating to stories told, uh, that kind of reflected where I was stories of a young man on his journey from adolescence into adulthood, becoming a man, what kind of a man do I want to be finding love? What is love? How do I define love? Where I am today, uh, I, my, my journey has brought me to a, a different place. I've, I've, I've had I've had some life experience, and again, I feel like my creative choices have to reflect that. Uh, so my, my my instinct is that I'm I'm drawn to and I'm and I'm really seeking 
character driven pieces something that uh exists at that organic human level uh not at a larger than life plot level mm. you know something like a you know, like a james bond type of spy flick uh is plot driven your character is kind of consistent all the way through he doesn't really the character doesn't have much of a journey to stop the evil scientist with a bomb that's the journey for me i'm seeking to do something that is a character story that speaks to kind of my life experience speaks to where i find myself now and where people of my age and a bit younger will find themselves you know uh mid 30s going to your 40s people are getting married getting divorced people are becoming parents people are losing their jobs people are losing their parents uh they're dealing with maybe a crisis of health these are the sorts of things that one starts to engage with that that, that, uh, that we find ourselves tackling as we move through our 30s and into our 40s mm. this is part of the human experience and this is something that now i feel is interesting uh, and these are these are stories that now i feel like i want to explore mm. something that, that touches on that 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 dives into this stuff you know it's very fascinating because you did a film could break your back but i think if you were to write a book i think this chapter of your life would actually be could break your back <laughs> quite uh, ironically yeah. you know? um but i really hope that we get to see you soon uh in a film in a series or anything that it is that you're really craving to do imran because i mean i miss you seeing on the big screen you know i i really honestly cherish so much of the works that you've done because it really you know it made our sort of teenage years sorry not to kind of age you or to kind of add a quantify your experience as an actor but it really made it such a fruitful and a very one memorable one at that you know it just makes me really miss that time i think right now nostalgia is such a huge factor in comforting people you know it i i i have been a uh, bit picking up on this you know post pandemic uh there is this sense of great loss of great despair indeed uh and my my the, what, what i've read what 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 i what i uh, what i perceive from the world around me is it seems to me that people today have a greater sense of despair and pessimism about their world and about their future than at any time before you know uh you go back 15 years 20 years people have always complained about the state of the world mm. but i don't think that there was this uh, the, the, this absolutely permeate all permeating sense of despair and pessimism not 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 quite like this i i i feel that today people are yeah uh people are uh, are in greater despair mm. than they have ever been and the sense of the of the world is so bleak uh that within that now there is a greater want and a greater need than ever before for some kind of comfort for, for 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 someone to put a, a hand on the shoulder and say hey brother it's going to be okay it's uh i i i feel this i i i i see this in in uh, in the world around me and that also really informs my creative choices uh i have personally found myself in a place the last few years where i'm feeling very sensitive and as such i am unable to engage with content i can't watch films or shows that are very stressful or very bleak uh it's it's just too much for me and i can't mm. i so, so as a viewer i have really been wishing and wanting for something that has a that has a gentler touch mm. and now as a creative person i my instinct is that that's the voice in which i have to speak uh that that's that's the feeling that i must put out mm. Well I hope this happens super soon Imran because we really we, I miss you know like I said I'm really missing you and I really hope and I'm looking forward to maybe catching up with you at an era time of a release you know I think that'll be a very poignant moment in the last 
So I'm, I'm right now at that place where I'm having conversations uh, and trying to lock something down. Uh, so there's there's a, a couple of pans on the fire, and I'm trying to uh, trying to dial them in and, and and lock these things down. I I I'm, I'm looking for something uh, re- really really awesome, really exciting to work on, and I'm hopefully very close to locking that down. Wow. Well, touch wood, Bhagwan. ऐसा करे कि सब कुछ materialize हो जाए और जल्द से जल्द आप एक set पे पहुँचो और हमें देखने का मौका मिले and then hopefully we'll do another wonderful interview. I'm sure. But Imran, thank you so much for joining me on Film Show. I mean, honestly, this is honestly, I think this is. I don't even have words to explain it. I mean, I can't even call this a candid interview because it's an understatement. This is this is an absolute gem. I think this is something which I, as a journalist, as a host, whatever you want to call it, yearn for. So thank you so much for. being such a wonderful wonderful you know artist to speak with i really honestly cherish really cherish this interview thank you so much thank you thank you thanks and thanks for being patient as i <laughs> shut down no, uh, it for it all please you, so I, you are daily now i genuinely am doing this all kind of solo i don't have management pr nothing so i'm it's it, it's all stay me like on my this. please stay like this honestly it I mean, I'm sure you've probably seen, but it's become so. Yeah, I better not say too much, but yeah, <laughs> to stay like this, it's the best. Trust me, just say who, where say then. It's the best. I've, I've lived in that world. I, I, I know what it's like. It's, it's the 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 pressure is too much. The stress is too high. I, I couldn't sustain it. I couldn't manage it. Nah, but you know what? You're good. I think the way you're going, sab kuch sahi hai. Just stay as you are because this is what makes I K I K. So it's good. Cool. Thank you so much Imran thank you so much we'll catch you soon thanks so much for having